Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th. Uh, today, I want to talk about something that I feel, number one, is going to be very controversial to some people. I hope not to you. I hope that you understand where I'm coming from on this. And, um, and to some people, it's going to be a little offensive. So know that there's going to be some language used in this particular video that uh, I'm not using as pejorative, but just as fact. Uh, you may have heard about the weathercaster in Rochester, New York, who was fired over the weekend for what people keep saying is that he used a racial slur. Now, I don't know if you've seen the video. I'm going to play you a clip in just a second of the actual thing that happened. And I'm going to tell you that it is absolutely, in my opinion, not true that he used any racial slur, but that he had a slip up in his voiceover work. He had a slip up in his presentation, in his performance. And it was an unfortunate one, but it's one that you'll also find out has happened time and time again in the past. And there's a really good reason for it that has to do with the way our minds work, the way language works, the way... Um, this particular man's name is structured. The weatherman uh, is named Jeremy Kappel. He worked at uh, WHEC in uh, Rochester, New York. And what he said on the weekend was he was giving a, a weather forecast. It's cold there this time of year. Uh, he said, here's a look at what happened or what it looks like at Martin. It was supposed to be Martin Luther King Jr., Park, the ice skating rink. And what he said was Martin Luther Kuhn uh, King Jr. Park. Now, I'm going to play it for you and I want you to listen to the cadence of it. I want you to listen to what he was in the middle of talking about. He's a weather guy giving temperature and conditions. And I want you to listen to it from the perspective of you're watching a, a, a weather cast. Go ahead overall it was great this is the way it looked out at martin luther king jr park the ice rink at the zamboni machine out okay so that was the video that went viral that's what caused the station to fire him that was a kind of a shaky cell phone video by somebody who was sort of shooting their television but i've isolated the line and i've actually gotten a copy of the full screen full fidelity video and audio of what he actually said listen to it carefully Martin Luther King Jr. Park. So that's what he said. Now I'm going to play it in context one more time, and I want you to listen to what his intent is. His intent is to give you the weather, and he makes a mistake. Overall, it was great. This is the way it looked out at Martin Luther King Jr. Park, the ice rink, at the Zamboni machine out. Okay. Now, there is a very easily understood reason for this. Anybody who understands how language is used, how performance works, you have two words, two syllables in Martin Luther King Jr.'s name that he transposed. The K in King and the U in Luther. Martin Luther King Jr., if he'd continued what he was saying before he caught himself, he, he would have said Martin, Kuhn, Ling, or something like that. He had reversed the opening sound of one of the words, King, with the vowel sound of Luther, Ku, right? And King ends in an N, so Kuhn is what came out. You know, I've looked at this guy's history. He's been a weatherman for 20 years. He's not working on the side as a white supremacist. He's not, um, he made a simple mistake. He hasn't come out and talked about his politics, nor should he have to. He's working at a radio, at a television station that, you know, he's not working for Fox News. And this damage, you know, they fired him over the weekend. The mayor of Rochester chose to be extraordinarily livid about this, as did social media. And the truth of the matter is, this is not the first time this has happened. Mike Golick, 
on Mike and Mike said exactly the same thing. I'm going to play you a couple of clips. Now, one of them is of a mayor in Alabama in the 50s who is a white supremacist. And he made the mistake and sincerely, like, apologized immediately. He was upset. He didn't agree with Martin Luther King's stuff. He called him an outside rabble rouser, brought in. But when he said it, he realized he made a mistake and he stopped and said what he said. Now, Jeremy did not. And if you know anything about how newscasts are constructed, they have a certain amount of time in which to get all that information out before they go on to sports and business news and all that sort of thing. It was also said by another uh, white man in the South, in South Carolina, and he too caught himself. It's not like they were, any of these people were stridently trying to um, demonize and vilify Martin Luther King by calling him by that racial slur of coon. We've had Martin Luther Coon, uh, King, pardon me, sir, Martin, Martin Luther King. Hey, I get down the street, I see Martin, Martin Luther Coon. Um, I shouldn't say that. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther Coon, King Jr. It's because of the way those words are constructed, and when you say them quickly, when you're in a hurry, it can pop out differently. And I know this from personal experience. Because when I worked on the air at WMAL in D.C., I was taking calls about uh, a cancer treatment that had been in the news. And right around that time was when cell phones began to be used to call into radio shows. I missed and misheard a word that a caller said. And I got called on the carpet for it, and I told them why. And my program director understood. My operations manager did not. But what happened was a caller said, uh, talking about his wife's cancer, uh, said, um, and now at this point it has metastasized. Now, what he said was metastasized, which is horrific. It means it's spread throughout the body. What I heard in my headphones in the studio was metabolized. And what I said to him when I heard that was, oh, that's great. Listening back to the tape, and I was listening, you, you know, when you do a talk show, you're in seven second delay. You're not really listening to what it sounds like on the air. You're listening to what's called the program chain. So it's before all of the high compression where you could hear everything. And I simply didn't hear him properly. In no way, shape, or form, was I trying to minimize his wife's cancer issues? That, that never even crossed my mind. I thought what he was saying was she was in remission, that it had metabolized. So these things happen all the time, both in the hearing of things, the saying of things. I've said things on the air. There, there was a woman here in Los Angeles who was doing the news on KNX, and it was on a Sunday night, and she was trying to rejoin... Uh, they were running 60 Minutes, the audio from 60 Minutes on a Sunday night, and she was trying to rejoin the network feed to 60 Minutes and couldn't make the board operate or something. And she didn't realize she still had her mic open. She had just done a live commercial, and she was trying to make it happen. There was silence, and she said, oh, shit. And that came out over the air. Was that on purpose? No, it wasn't. And I truly, truly believe that this easily transposed set of sounds, the fact that it's happened before, um, I, I can't imagine that anyone in his position would risk his job, risk what was going on by saying it overtly, saying it on purpose. And I hope that you as performers can understand this. Now, I may get, you know, comments below this video where it's like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You're a white guy. What would you know? I know performance. I know pressure. I know the way the mouth works. I know the way language works. I know intent. I know construction. 
and I know risk, and I know fear, and I also am very, very clear on what has happened over the last 20 years or so with social media and the web, and the immediacy of offense. The idea that someone would be offended by that, that's choice. That's choice. It's choice of the mayor in Rochester. It's choice of everybody who posted on social media. At no point in time do they consider the situation. Now, if that means I'm going to get lambasted for this, if I'm going to be insulted for this, so be it. I couldn't care less. The truth of the matter is this guy made an honest, simple, fast-talking, on-the-air, live mistake. It wasn't on purpose. And every time I see a headline that says, Weatherman fired for using racial slur, wasn't using a racial slur. It was a mistake. When I see a headline that says, Weatherman fired because he said a racial slur on the air. You know, we don't have the right in this country to not be offended. And social media gives us a wonderful way of expressing what unfortunately ends up being righteous indignation. And in this case, I believe it's really unfounded. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, if you want to sign up for, uh, subscribe to the channel, go ahead, click on my head. If you want to see the latest video I put out, go ahead, click on that picture. In the meantime, I'd love to hear what you think. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.